These notes on the wave speed equation will help you on the homework on the same topic. <clears throat> and this was the topic on which I asked you to fill out the notes as a challenge yesterday. See how much you could figure out on your own, and then we'll fill in the rest of it today in these notes. So we'll do an example, and I've got a sort of crude animation here. Here's a wave, and you're given that the wavelength, see the lambda for the wave, is 5 meters, 5 meters from crest to crest, and you're told that the frequency of the wave for a person for you here with your little red timer is 2 hertz. Now what does that mean for waves? What that means is 2 crests per second pass under you. 2 crests per second. So that would look something like this. So we'll do 2 crests per second. Like that. Okay, so we'll do that one more time. All right, two crests per second pass under you. That's what it looks like. And the question that you're asked is, what's the speed of this wave? Calculate the speed if you only have those two numbers. So you're given that the frequency is two hertz, or two crests per second, and the wavelength, and that's the symbol for wavelength, for the final you should know, you should be able to draw that symbol correctly and know the name of it. I could ask you that on the final, the name is lambda, it's a Greek letter. That's how they made their L. It's a lowercase l in Greek and L for length, wavelength. And you're given that the wavelength is five meters and you're asked to calculate the speed. So if you think of this, two crests per second, that means in a single second, this is what happens, starting here to here. That's how much passes under you in a second, two crests per second, so you're there, count one, Two, like that. You don't count the one you start at, just like you don't count at the beginning of running laps. You don't count before you complete a lap. You wait until you complete one wavelength, that's one wave, two waves. So two waves or two crests pass under you per second, and between every pair of crests is five meters. So what's the total distance that went under you in those two seconds? And then um, how how far is it between crests? It's five meters, so the total distance that went under you is 10 meters, and that happens two crests per second means 10 meters pass under you per second. So the answer is 10 meters per second. So how do you get to 10 from these two numbers? And the answer, of course, is that you multiply. Now in your notes you should draw a little wave, so I'll put that in here in case you pause the video later and look at it. Right, And from here to here is 5 meters. All right, 2 crests per second, so 10 meters per second pass under you. So what did you do with these two numbers to get that? Well, if you, you, obviously, it's obvious from the numbers, but it also starts to become obvious if you just think about it in general that this gives you the speed of the wave. And this is really the only equation we have for wave motion that we have to worry about in our class. So what you have, v, it looks like velocity, but it can mean speed. Speed equals, what's the little f stand for? Frequency. And you should know the name of that symbol and be able to draw it correctly. Know that it's lambda and know what it stands for. It stands for wavelength. That's really all there is to it for most of the problems. However, since this is a simple equation and since it's used in a certain way with waves very often, at this point I ask you to start thinking on a somewhat higher level. And it's a good, this is a good equation to use for this higher level because it's so simple. That higher level is not to plug in numbers. No, there will be no numbers on the next two boards, but just to think in terms of change. And what does change mean here? Change just means get bigger or get smaller. And we'll use the words increase or decrease, that idea. To use an equation, not, never use a single number and just talk about getting bigger and smaller or staying constant. A lot of science is done like this in real life, a lot of science and engineering, and a lot of questions are like this in, in higher level math and science classes, where you're not actually plugging in numbers, but you're talking about increasing, decreasing, or staying constant. So you want to be able to look at an equation and think of it, use it that way, and a really good analogy is it's like a balance, or like a seesaw, like something that's balanced, like this. And of course, if we put more weight on one side, if we increase the weight on one side, we want to keep it in balance because it's an equation. It has to stay equal. That means the other side has to increase as well. 
All right, so here's case one. One of the three letters in these type of problems will be constant, and the other two will be changing. So I've indicated the constant letter in black, the changing letters in blue. So case one is where the frequency stays constant. For some reason, the frequency is forced to be constant, but the other two can change. Right? This can happen on a spring or a string especially. We can shake it slowly at a low frequency or shake it quickly at a higher frequency. But if the tension in the spring stays the same, the uh, or, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Let me back up. We can tighten the spring or loosen the spring, and that will change the speed of the waves on a spring, but the frequency may, will stay the same. We can do this um, on a spring. Uh, earthquake waves do this when they travel through different densities of rock. Their speed will change, but their frequency will stay the same. And the wavelength can change. All right, so let's look at our two cases. And what's in black has to stay the same. What if we do something like tighten a string so that the speed increases, but the frequency stays constant? What has to happen to the wavelength? Lambda, the wavelength, must do what? So if we increase the speed, and here's how we represent that like kind of pictorially. That's what we start with, and then we make the speed bigger, but it still has to balance, like a seesaw or a balance. It still has to balance. So to keep it equal, if we make the left side bigger, this cannot change. What has to happen to the wavelength? And the answer, I hope, is pretty obvious. It has to get bigger. Now both sides are in balance. They're equal to each other. So if the speed increases, but the frequency stays constant, then the wavelength must increase. And then the next part would go fast is just the, the reverse of that. What if the speed decreases and the frequency is constant? That's like making the V a real tiny V. But we have to keep things in balance. The only, thing, the only way it can stay in balance is if the wavelength also shrinks. Both sides got smaller, so wavelength must decrease. Right, now we'll move on to the final case, case two. This can be a little trickier to understand, but if you go over it several times, it should start to make sense. Now we're in the case where we're holding the speed constant, and we're changing the frequency, and the wavelength will change. So the two in blue are the two that can change. The one in black is the one that cannot change. This would be like holding a rope at a constant tension. This is what I was trying to say earlier, but you can shake it slowly, or you can shake it more quickly. All right, but we're holding in a constant tension, so that's keeping the speed constant, where you just can change the frequency we shake it at. So if the frequency increases, then the wavelength must do what? And we'll show that pictorially, and you, can pause, you should pause the video and try to guess the answers before I tell you them. I cannot change the size of the V. It's in black. It's constant. But it says if the frequency increases, so I make the F really, really big. What has to happen to the wavelength? Well, let's go through our three choices. If the wavelength stayed the same, this side would get bigger, and it would no longer be equal to that side. So the wavelength can't stay the same. If the wavelength got bigger, then both of these get bigger. And this is now bigger than that. It's not equal anymore. So that can't be the case. The only case left that's possible is if the frequency gets bigger, the wavelength has to get smaller to balance that out, so that a big frequency times a small wavelength is now equal to the same speed it was before. An example of this might be if you had, I'll just write this quickly as an example so you can see what the number, 12 equals, say, 3 times 4. And now we make the wavelength, or we, I'm sorry, we make the frequency bigger, make the frequency bigger. We still need this to be 12. That's not changing. We make the frequency bigger. We make it, say, 6. Okay, 12 equals 6 times what? 2. So by making the frequency bigger, look what had to happen to the wavelength to keep it in balance. It had to get smaller, so put decrease. And the way we say this is they're inversely related. One gets bigger, the other has to get smaller. Okay, what if we do the opposite? We'll go faster here because this should be uh, obvious now. If frequency decreases, then wavelength must do what? So the way you would write this with colors and pictorially is like this. We're making the frequency smaller but we need the two multiplied together to equal the same speed. So what has to happen to the wavelength? It has to get bigger. So put increase here. 